In this video, we're going to be looking at prostaglandin and how prostaglandin is linked with hair loss. Hey guys, Leon here and welcome to the Hair Guard YouTube channel. On this channel, we create tons of science-backed YouTube videos just like this one, all about how you can combat hair loss and regrow healthy hair. If you are new here, consider subscribing. Androgenetic alopecia, the most common cause of hair loss in men, is a problem that affects millions of people worldwide. And while there are drugs on the market that claim to treat the condition, namely minoxidil and finasteride, they tend to only cover up the problem as opposed to treating it at its source. There are many factors that contribute to the development of AGA, including genetics, lifestyle, hormones and environment. One particular factor is prostaglandin D2 or PGD2. In this video, I'll introduce PGD2 and the role it plays in hair loss as well as the scientific studies that definitely prove this link. I'll then discuss the process of PGD2 production and the possible treatment options available. Let's get started. Prostaglandin D2, otherwise known as PGD2, is an eicosanoid responsible for many ill effects on the body. Synthesized in peripheral tissues as well as the central nervous system, PGD2 is proven to cause bronchial constriction during asthma attacks, increase drowsiness far more than any other internally created molecule, play an integral role in allergic reactions such as eczema, increase inflammation, inhibit hair growth, especially in relation to male pattern baldness. PGD2 can cause severe or even deadly reactions for a small percentage of our population. However, if you are a man, the bullet point that made your heart rate pick up the most was probably the last one. As you are probably well aware, male pattern baldness affects approximately 70% of the male Caucasian population before they hit the age of 70. The loss of hair leads men to feel less confident about themselves and their bodies. To make matters worse, there are only a few medically approved treatments for the condition and even those courses of action can be dangerous or unhelpful. Now, even worse than just triggering hair fall, PGD2 has also been shown to induce calcification. For years, dihydrotestosterone or DHT was believed to be the sole cause of pattern balding. Over time, though, researchers learned that sensitivity to DHT is just one component of its progression. Another component, calcification. Calcification was first noted as a possible component of hair loss in the 1940s when Frederick Holzel noted a relationship between capillary calcification and pattern balding in cadavers. And with our current understanding of the hair follicle, this makes sense. Here's why. The follicle in an organ that's connected to the circularity systems via blood vessels found at its base. These vessels deliver oxygen and nutrients to the follicle as well as enable the removal of waste buildup. Calcification occurs when an excess of calcium is deposited into the arteries and surrounding tissues which causes a narrowing of the arteries and eventually complete blockage. This is most often seen in con coronary arteries uh, though blood pathways through the body are susceptible to the condition. Interestingly, studies suggest a correlation between AGA and heart disease which further supports the theory that calcification may contribute to pattern balding. But what causes this increased susceptibility to calcification and therefore pattern balding? Well, according to recent research, DHT and PGD2 may be to blame. By reduce, reducing PGD2 levels, scientists may be able to slow down or stop further calcification. Thankfully, a recent scientific breakthrough was published concerning the effects of prostaglandin D2 on hair follicles. This means that a more reliable cure for slowed hair growth could soon be on the way. We're now going to have a look at some studies that correlate with androgenetic alopecia and PGD2. Well, first we're going to look at prostaglandin D2 inhibiting hair growth in mice with human hair follicles. A 2012 study conducted primarily by Dr. Garza of John Hopkins University and Dr. Kotsarelis at the University of Pennsylvania revealed that the presence of PGD2 is indicative of androgenetic alopecia, the scientific term for male pattern baldness. The correlation was first hinted at when scientists found that just before a laboratory mouse naturally went through its period of hair regression, a rise in the levels of PGD2 occurred. From this finding, Dr. Garza and Dr. Kotsarelis hypothesized that large quantities of PGD2 in the skin inhibited hair growth, likely through the GPR44 receptor. 
To test this hypothesis, laboratory mice were implanted with human hair follicles. Then, PGD2 was applied topically to some of the mice while other mice had a control vehicle treatment applied. This led to the mice treated with PGD2 having less luscious and long hair than their control peers, as you can see in the charts to the right. Next, let's look at levels of prostaglandin D2 synthesis uh, and they're much higher in men with AGA. Now, in the same scientific article, Dr. Garza and Dr. Kotsourilis mentioned another segment of this groundbreaking scientific inquiry in which a large unbiased screening was conducted with the scalps of men with either hair or AGA-related baldness. In this genetic analysis, the scalps with male pattern baldness had levels of the molecule responsible for synthesizing PGD2, three times higher than those not suffering from androgenetic alopecia. These initial results were checked using mRNA proteins and mass spectrometry. The graphic to the right illustrates to the extent uh, which PGD2 is present in bold scalps as compared to head scalps. And we can see on the graph is, is huge, like the difference is massive. Let's also look at PGD2 and its GPR44 receptor, and that keeps mice regenerating hair follicles after a wound. In a related study, Dr. Garza teamed up with another group of John Hopkins scientists to determine if prostaglandin D2 had any effect on the regrowth of wounded follicles, particularly through the receptor GPR44. They first used mass spectrometry to measure the amount of prostaglandins in full thickness wounds inflicted on the lab mice. Then, they analyzed the prostaglandins present in the wound at regular intervals to determine the stages of the healing process at which each variety of prostaglandin was most prevalent. The results showed that PGE2 and PGF2 were predominant during the beginning of the wound healing process, when the bulk of the repair work was being done. During later stages of the wound healing, PGD2 levels increased. A secondary part of the experiment inflicted wounds on three species of lab mice and monitored the prostaglandin levels throughout the healing process. When the wound fully closed, the scientists examined the scars on the mice and recorded the number of regrown hair follicles on each one. The scientists found that the mice species with the most PGD2 present in the closed wound also had the lowest average number of regenerated hair follicles. Mice with higher levels of PGE2 and PGF2A had higher levels of follicle regeneration. After that, a direct correlation between PGD2 GPR44 and hair follicle regeneration was sought. First, the scientists topically applied PGD2 to the healing wounds of some wild type mice while treating others with a control vehicle. In the top chart to the right of the graphic, uh, the results are obvious. The mice treated, whose wounds were treated with PGD2 were as significantly fewer regenerated follicles than the control mice. Still, the scientists desired more conclusive results pertaining to the inhibitive qualities PGD2 presents for hair follicle regeneration. Thus, they obtained knockout mice, which were genetically modified to be missing either PTGDR or GPR44, the two receptors that mediate PGD2 activity. The knockout mice were joined by mice heterozygous for the GPR44 receptor, as well as some C57B1 stroke 6J control mice. Each variety was wounded and allowed to heal. It turns out, as observed in the middle chart, the PTGDR KO mice had about as many regenerated follicles as the control, but the GPR44 KO mice had more regenerated follicles than the control. This shows that the presence of GPR44 inhibits follicle regeneration. We're just going to have a look at castor oil. So one of the herbs tested in this study was Ricinus communis, more commonly referred to as castor. The main component which contributes to PG2 inhibition is ricinoleic acid. There's a few reasons for its power powerful inhibitory effects. First and foremost, ricinoleic acid has a strong docking score. Essentially, the better a molecule can interact and bind with another, the better the odds of inhibition. Next, ricinoleic acid has a great skin permeability. This is vital for the delivery of the positive effects, including PGD2 inhibition. Also, uh, Chinese foxglove. So Chinese foxglove, also known as Remania alata, is a herbaceous plant with hairy leaves and pink tubular flowers. One of its main components, astiocide, has been indicated as an inhibitor of PGE2 release and production following the arachidonic acid cascade. But since PGE2 has actually been indicated as a hair growth promoter, why inhibit it? Well, PGE2 is produced right alongside PGD2 in the cascade. 
The inhibition of one, PGE2 in this case, is strongly believed to indicate the inhibition of the other. And also two year, intal two year orientalis. An evergreen coniferous tree, two year orientalis, is one of the TCM's most used herbs. For the purposes of this video, let's take a look at the three components within two year orientalis that have been shown to inhibit the production of PGD2, and they are labeled there. Now, of the three components, this one and this one were shown to have high docking scores. This means they interact and bind well with PTGDS, a gene which encourages the production of PGH to PGD2. With the inhibition of PTGDS, then, the overproduction of PGD2 can be stopped in its tracks. On to the final uh, compound. This flavonoid inhibits PGE2 biosynthesis. PGE2 is structurally similar to PGD2, so therefore it is believed that the compound can similarly inhibit PGD2. Now there is strong evidence that prostaglandin D2 is at least partially responsible for male pattern baldness, and as such it's a good idea to consider it as a serious threat when looking to treat your hair loss. However, PGD2 isn't the only cause of male pattern baldness. The best approach is one that targets multiple factors, and this can be done with the help of scientifically proven and formulated hair loss treatments. Minoxidil and finasteride are two options, but they aren't the only ones. Natural ones do exist, which target the underlying cause of alopecia so as to treat the problem at its source. So guys, that's what we want to share with you on prostaglandin D2. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.